Welcome to an example of Picard's iteration method, sometimes referred to as the method of successive approximations. The Picard iteration process consists of constructing a sequence of functions that get closer and closer to a solution to an initial value problem. So in this example, we're given a first order differential equation with the initial condition y of zero equals zero, and we're asked to find the corresponding Picard iterations y sub one of t and y sub two of t. So if the differential equation is in this form here, dy dt equals f of t comma y with this initial condition, then if y sub zero of t equals y of zero, then we can use this recursive formula here to find each Picard iteration, where y sub n plus one of t equals y sub zero plus the integral from t sub zero to t of f of s comma y sub n of s differential s. So notice our differential equation does fit this form where f of t comma y is four t y squared plus six. To begin, we make the approximation y sub zero of t equals zero, which is a horizontal line passing through the point given by the initial condition. So now to find y sub one of t, notice how for y sub one of t, n would be equal to zero. So we'd have y sub one of t equals y sub zero plus the integral from t sub zero to t of f of s comma y sub zero of s. Notice this is y sub zero of s, again because n is zero when we're trying to find y sub one of t. Now we'll fill in the known values because the initial condition of y of zero equals zero, y sub zero is zero, t sub zero is also zero, and now we'll find the integrand function, which is f of s comma y sub zero of s. But notice how y sub zero of s would be equal to zero because y sub zero of t equals zero. So to find f of s comma y sub zero of s, we substitute s for t and zero for y into f of t comma y. So we'd have four s times zero squared plus six differential s. Simplifying y sub one of t equals the integral from zero to t of just six differential s. So the antiderivative is six s. When we find big F of b minus big F of a, that just gives us six t. So we know that y sub one of t equals six t. Now we'll find y sub two of t, and we'll need y sub one of t to find y sub two of t. Going to the next slide, again we now know y sub one of t equals six t. We want to find y sub two of t. Notice for y sub two of t, n equals one. So we'd have y sub two of t equals, this is still y sub zero, which we already know is zero, plus the integral from t sub zero to t, and we also know t sub zero is zero. And the integrand function is now f of s comma y sub one of s, again because for y sub two of t, n is equal to one. And y sub one of s is equal to six s because y sub one of t equals six t. So to find the integrand function, we substitute s for t and six s for y. So we would have zero plus the integral from zero to t of four s times the square of six s plus six differential s. Simplifying, we have y sub two of t equals the integral from zero to t of four s times thirty-six s squared plus six. Four times thirty-six is one hundred forty-four. S to the third plus six. Integrating, y sub two of t is equal to one hundred forty-four times s to the fourth divided by four plus six s. 144 divided by four equals 36. So y sub two of t equals big F of b minus big F of a gives us 36 t to the fourth plus six t. So this would be our second approximation using the Picard iteration process. Now we are done with this problem, but I do want to mention sometimes if we find enough iterations, we can express the solution 
as an infinite series, or sometimes even as a Taylor polynomial. I hope you found this helpful.